Hi, in this video we're going to look at uh, basic continuous annuities and to do that let's somewhat look at an example here. So let's let's consider the equation y equal v to the t power where t is between 0 and 3. Thinking of t as being measured in years and so I'm thinking of this as like a three-year period here. Remember that uh, our v's are going to be representing um, in this case annual discount factor uh, and so it's uh, value between 0 and 1 and, and so when you take a, when you look at, say, the graph of y equal v to the t power, this exponential where the base is between 0 and 1, you get this concave up decreasing graph. Uh, so I've got something that looks like that over the interval from 0 to 3. And I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, in looking at, um, I'm going to turn this around a little bit, and uh, it's kind of neat stuff, I think, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come at it from a geometric standpoint and then, and then tie it back into the financial, uh, to the FM stuff. So let's, from a geometric standpoint, you know, we can represent the area under the curve by, by this definite integral from 0 to 3 of v to the t dt. And so now, what would Riemann say to do in order to, to calculate that, 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 uh, uh, that integral? Uh, Riemann would say, well, let's, let's split the interval from 0 to 3 up into pieces. So the natural pieces would be, say, from 0 to 1, 1 to 2, and 2 to 3, and so forth. And then I could even get these points along the graph uh, the points, uh, you know, that correspond to where the t values are 0, 1, 2, and 3. And then, uh, again, I'm interested in this, uh, in this integral from 0 to 3 of v to the t dt. And so Riemann, Riemann told us, well, let's look at some uh, overestimates and underestimates based on areas of rectangles. And so let's look at an overestimate. By overestimates, uh, we could look at, uh, say, for instance, over the, over the interval from 0 to 1, let's look at this rectangle. Uh, and so that, that rectangle would have an area where its height is 1 and its width is 1. So that, that rectangle would have an area of 1. And then, I've, again, I'm doing an overestimate. So on the second uh, interval from, uh, from 1 to 2, I would use a rectangle that looks like that. Now, the height of that rectangle would be um, uh, the, y, the y value uh, corresponding where t is 1. In other words, v and then the width is 1. The width of these rectangles that I have drawn are 1. So that, that area would be V. And then finally, the third, uh, over, the third rectangle in my overestimate would look like this, and, and its area would be a V squared. And so I could uh, overestimate uh, the, the integral from 0 to 3 of V to the T dt by uh, a 1 plus V plus V squared. And, and what I want to do is recognize that that's our VEP expression for an A double dot uh, angle three, and so um, so that would be a, 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 a an upper Riemann sum. A, a double dot angle three would be an upper Riemann sum for that integral from zero to three of v to the t dt. So let's go back now and and look at maybe even a finer partition. So let's instead of uh, looking at intervals 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 3, maybe uh, 0 to, uh, to 1 half, 1, 1 half to 1, 1 to 3 halves, and so forth. And we could add in the, the points on those and the coordinates of those points and then look at an overestimate or an upper Riemann sum on this integral. And I would end up with um, the first rectangle looking like this. Now, the widths of all of these rectangles are gonna be one half. So it's gonna be, the areas are gonna be one half times whatever the height is. The height of the first rectangle is one. So the area of that first overestimate rectangle is one. And the next rectangle for the overestimate is gonna look like this. And its uh, height is V to the one half. So its area of that rectangle is one half V to the one half. And then the area of the next uh, uh, rectangle would be a one half times v. The area of the next rectangle would be one half v to the three halves, and then a one half v squared, and then a one half uh, v to the five halves. And so when I add all of those up, I get that that's going to be an overestimate of uh, the uh, the integral from v to uh, zero to three of v to the t dt. But that that expression, uh, how many terms? A six term expression is. What we did in a previous video, that's just the VEP expression for an A double dot angle 3 uh, up or 2. So I have, an e, I have another overestimate. And now uh, let's compare the A double dot angle 3 with the A double dot angle 3 up or 2 that's shown here. Remember, the A double dot angle 3 is the area of the shaded region there, and the A double dot three, angle 3 up or 2 is, a, is this shaded region. So, of course, the A double dot angle 3 up or 2 is a better estimate than an A double dot angle 3. And so what I'm getting is that both of them are overestimates, but 
they're, um, uh, you know, I can kind of order them this way that the, the integral from zero to three of e to the t dt would be less than an a double dot angle three upper two, which would be just, which would be less than the a double dot angle three. And if I, instead of using widths of one half, I used widths of one third, I'd get an upper three, uh, an a double dot angle three upper three estimate, and, and it would be tiered this way. And, and if I kept going, I would get uh, better and better overestimates, overestimates, but, but closer and closer to what the actual area is under that, uh, under that curve. Now, in the interest of saving some time here, I'm going to let you see that if instead of using overestimates, rectangles that gave me overestimates, I used underestimates, what I would find is that instead of the, getting the A double dots, uh, uh, you know, the, the VEP expressions that are the A double dots, I get VEP expressions that are the A's without the double dots. In other words, A angle three would be an underestimate of that area. Um, A, do, uh, A angle three upper two, no double dot, A angle three upper two would be Another underestimate, but a better, in, in a sense, better underestimate of, of that area. And I get, uh, you know, eight, angle three, upper three would be even a better estimate, but still underestimate. And I get a pattern that looks that looks like that. So generally, uh, I could just use upper M notation. And then a, when I see an A angle N upper M, I can think of that as a lower Riemann sum for the integral from zero to N of V to the T dt. And the A double dot angle N upper M, I could uh, view that as an upper Riemann sum. Uh, and so now the, the, let, me you know, let me put in the uh, closed root formulas for these, uh, for these A's and A double dots. Uh, the A is, uh, you know, associated with an annuity uh, immediate, and so the denominator is an I, or in this case, I upper M, and, and likewise the denominator for the formula for an annuity due is going to have a D, or in this case, a D upper M in it. And notice that, uh, you know, what Riemann would say to do is take the limit on both sides as M goes to infinity, and, and that's what you're area under that curve would be, or that's what that integral is defined to be, is that limit as m goes to infinity of this. And as m goes to infinity, you, the i upper m and the d upper m are both deltas, and so you just get an equality here. In other words, then, that integral uh, from 0 to n, uh, I should have mentioned, I, I, I'm doing this generally from 0 to n now, not from 0 to 3, but the integral from 0 to n of v to the t dt then is, I can think of, uh, I, it, it is a 1 minus v to the n uh, over delta. The symbol that I use for that is, I, I think of this as a present value then uh, of a of a continuous, an in-year continuous annuity paying one per year. Remember the A's and the A double dots, the upper M stuff pays, is, is an annuity that pays one per year, just it's making M payments of one over M. And so as M goes to infinity, you're making, you know, M payments of one over M becomes a continuous payment of one throughout the year, paid kind of evenly throughout the year, uh, however you do that. It has more theoretical value than it has pra uh, practical value. So A bar, we use on the, on the left-hand side of the screen here, on the bottom left-hand side, you would say that symbol as an A bar uh, angle in. Uh, actuaries like their bars, I certainly, I certainly do. Uh, so we, we use bars a lot. So that's an A bar angle N on the left-hand side is how I would say that. And uh, it's equal to the integral from v zero to N of, of uh, in, in fact, that, that integral is what I think of as the VEP expression. I personally think of that integral as the VEP expression. And then one minus V to the N over delta, I think as the closed rule formula. Let me make a couple of marks to, to uh, wind this down. First, uh, I could have arrived at this result in uh, probably an easier way. I just thought the, uh, the, 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 connection to uh, calculus I thought was pretty neat, so I wanted to show you that. Uh, but I could have gotten there an easier way, and namely by just performing the integration. So uh, the integral from zero to n of v to the t dt, if you look at the closed root formula, you see that delta. So it's kind of implying that you're using a delta, uh, that you have a delta. Uh, in other words, you're, there's an implication here that you're compounding. I'm using V's also, so that's also an implicate, you know, implies that I'm actually compounding. And so the V to the T, since I'm compounding, I can think of having a delta. There's some fixed delta, so uh, not a general force of interest delta T that depends on time, but a constant force of interest delta. 
And in that case, uh, V is just E to the minus delta. So the V to the T is E to the minus delta T. So the integrand just becomes an E to the minus delta T. And now I'm just integrating this exponential, which is very easy to do from, from calculus. You know, you integrate an E to the minus delta T. What do you get? Well, so minus one over delta E to the minus delta T that you then evaluate from zero to N. And I'm going to leave it to you to go through the steps, plug in the N, plug in the zero, and you end up with a one minus an E to the minus delta N divided by delta. But the E to the minus delta N, look at that last term in the numerator, the E to the minus delta N is, a, I could think of as an E to the minus delta raised to the N power, and the E to the minus delta is the V. So I'm right back to what I had before, which is that that integral is just a one minus a V to the N over delta. Again, probably a little bit easier to, to get to that result uh, this way, but um, I, again, I wanted to show you the connections with, with, uh, with calculus. That symbol, symbolically then, that's, an, that's what we represent by an A bar angle N, and in words, that would be the present value of an in-year continuous annuity that pays one per year. The one is being paid continuously throughout the year. Again, theoretical value, but not, not practical value. You're not going to be able to pay uh, one continuously throughout the year. Okay, and then finally, a second remark that I want to make is, uh, what about the accumulated value of this type of an annuity in your continuous annuity paying one per year? Well, uh, again, the, the, the idea is that, uh, well, first of all, symbolically, I'm going to use an S because it's an accumulated value of this annuity. So I would write this as an S bar angle N. The valuation date for an S bar angle N would be at time N. The valuation date for an A bar angle N would be at time zero. Uh, I could think of those as time zero and time N. They're N years apart. So if I had the A bar angle N value, I just need to accumulate it N years. And I would do that by multiplying by a one plus i to the n. Uh, if you look at the a bar angle n, the, uh, what I consider the VEP expression for that is the, 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 uh, the integral of v to the t uh, dt from 0 to n. Now multiplying by 1 plus i to the n, so I can bring that inside the integral, and when I multiply a v to the t times a 1 plus i to the n, of course, V is a 1 over a 1 plus I. And so I end up with an integral from 0 to N. I left off a couple of the details, but you're, you, can, you can do this. So you end up with an integral from 0 to N of 1 plus I raised to the N minus T dt. And I could go a step farther by uh, recognizing that 1 plus I is a... Um, uh, I'm thinking, again, I'm thinking of time being measured in years, so 1 plus i would be the annual accumulation factor, and in terms of deltas, that would be just an e to the delta. So I'd have an e to the delta uh, raised to the n minus t power, or just e to the delta times n minus t. And then the closed roof formula, if you look at the closed roof formula, what I'm considering the closed roof formula is that 1 minus v to the n over delta. And if you multiply that times a 1 plus i to the n, you end up with a 1 plus i to the n minus 1 all over delta. So that would be the closed roof formula for uh, the S bar angle n. Okay, uh, so I will see you in the next video.